Hiya folks. In this video we'll have a look at how to charge a capacitor and the effect that resistance has on the charging current and the potential difference. So in its simplest form a capacitor is just two plates of a thin metal foil that are separated by an insulating material such as plastic or waxed paper. This is then usually rolled up to save space. The capacitor is able to store energy in the electric field that is set up between these plates. So to charge a capacitor, we need to connect it in series to a cell or a battery. The cell or battery will have a positive terminal and it will have a negative terminal. We know that in a circuit, current will flow from positive to negative, but that is conventional current that flows from positive to negative. In order to understand how the capacitor charges, we need to think about the movement of the electrons. So if we consider the electrons that are just to the right of the cell, in other words, to the right of the negative side of the cell, so just at this point here, well, since the electrons are negatively charged and they are beside the negative terminal of the cell, then they will repel each other. And those electrons will repel from the negative terminal of the cell towards the plate. And they will gather here on the plate. That means that this plate will have an excess of electrons. So therefore, this is the negative side of the capacitor. On the other side, the electrons that are on the other plate, they will be repelled from the negative plate and therefore they will also be attracted towards the positive terminal of the, of the cell. Now because this plate has now lost electrons, there's a deficit of electrons, then this plate is positively charged. Now this movement of electrons means that there is a current and this charging current decreases while the capacitor is charging and eventually it stops whenever the potential difference across the capacitor is equal to the EMF of the battery. The rate at which this capacitor charges will depend on the capacitance of the capacitor itself and also the resistance of the circuit. If there's very little resistance in the circuit, the capacitor will charge really quickly. As you can see here, as soon as you close the switch in the circuit, then the voltmeter that's connected across the capacitor, the value will jump very quickly to match that same value that's on the voltmeter across the cell. So now we'll take a look at investigating what effect increasing the resistance of the circuit has on charging the capacitor. To do this, we're going to add a resistor in series to the circuit. So for this experiment, we are going to need a battery. We need a capacitor. We need a resistor. In this case, this is a 22 kilo ohm resistor. We need a switch. We need a voltmeter and a stopwatch. And we're going to set those up as shown here in the diagram. So what we will do is we will close the switch and then start the timer at the same time and then record the potential difference from across the capacitor every 10 seconds and we'll do that for two minutes. So just a note, whenever we begin, we should make sure that the capacitor is fully discharged, meaning that the voltmeter should read zero. As you can see here, there's a very, very small reading on the voltmeter of 0, 0.02 volts. So that could be down to either a fault within the capacitor or simply human error in that the capacitor wasn't discharged fully before beginning.
So once we have a full set of results, we can very quickly discharge the capacitor by removing the leads from either side and touching them together. And you'll see the value in the voltmeter drops down to zero almost immediately. So now we're going to repeat that experiment, except this time we're going to change the 22 kilo ohm resistor to a 100 kilo ohm resistor. And we'll see what effect that has on the time it takes for the capacitor to fully charge. So we can see from the results the effect of adding the resistor into that charging circuit and the effect is that the more resistance there is in that circuit then the longer it will take the capacitor to fully charge. If we look at the first set of results with the 22 kilo ohm resistor we recorded the voltage across the capacitor for two minutes and within that two minutes the capacitor had essentially fully charged. However, if we look at the circuit with the 100 kilo ohm resistor in it, we can see that by the end of the two minutes, the capacitor was still not fully charged. So the next step now would be to pause the video here and to plot the graph of the voltage against time. So we will be plotting the time interval here on the x-axis and we will put the voltage across the capacitor on the y-axis. So you should end up with two separate line graphs on that same set of axes. So our graphs should look something similar to this. I'm going to add in a line to this graph and that is the EMF of the cell. Remember the charge in the capacitor stops whenever the voltage across the capacitor is equal to the EMF of the cell, which in this case was just above six, um, six volts. So that value there is the EMF, or of the battery rather in this case. So when we're charging the capacitor, what we should find is that if we look at the circuit in, drawn in red here, the 22 kilo ohm resistor circuit, that the charging happens very quickly at the beginning and then it starts to level off as it gets closer and closer to that six volts. If we look at the 100 kilo ohm circuit shown in green here, it does not charge as quickly but again at the end of that two minutes it was closer to the six volts but it still hadn't quite reached it so it was taking a longer time for that capacitor to be fully charged. In fact this particular setup took nearly 10 minutes for the capacitor to fully charge. And that's it, I hope you find that useful.